I want to talk now about the height of a red black tree, because as we have discussed, many of the operations that we perform on a red black tree, the running time is going to be on the order of the height of that tree. And we wanted to design it in such a way that the height is on the order of log of n, where n is the number of nodes. So why is that the case? Let us actually prove that result. And let me start by defining a notion that we call the black height of a node. So the black height of node x, the black height of node x, which we denote by bh of x, is the number of black nodes, of black nodes, on the path, on any path actually, any path from x, but excluding x itself, excluding x itself to a leaf. Now notice that this is well defined, even though I said on any path, because as we know, the number of black nodes on all paths from a node to all the leaves under it must have the same number of black of black nodes. So if I use this definition, let's actually uh, look at the heights of uh, black heights of the nodes in this tree. So the, for all the leaves here, the black leaves, the height is zero. This is zero. Why? Because if you look at any path from the leaf to a leaf, it has just one black node in it, but we have to exclude that, right? Because we say excluding x. So the height of these are, is zero. For the for the red nodes for the red nodes at the at the bottom, the any path from them to a leaf has one black node. So here will be one. The black height of these nodes is one. If we look at the second layer there of black nodes. Every path from there to a leaf has two black nodes, including the node itself. We have to subtract one. So the, the height here is one, 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 one. The, for these, the red ones here is the same thing. Sorry, it's not the same thing at all. It's two. Because if you look at any path from such a node to a leaf, it has two black nodes on it. And if we look at the, at the root, the black height of the root is two as well. Because if you look at any path from the root to a leaf, it has, if we exclude the color of the root itself, it has two black nodes in it. Okay? So the black height of a node is the number of black nodes on the path from the, from the node to a leaf, again, excluding the node itself. Okay? So let's start with an important lemma here to prove an important lemma. So the lemma says that it, let's let's have t is a red black tree and x is a node in this red black tree then the number of internal nodes internal nodes n t sub x. t sub x is the subtree rooted at node x. Okay, t sub x is the subtree rooted at node x is greater than or equal to 2 to the black height of the node x minus 1. Okay, so if you take any node in this tree here that is drawn and you look at the black height of that, and you look at the number of internal nodes in the subtree rooted at it, you will find that the number of internal nodes is greater than or equal to 2 to the black height of the node minus 1. One, one definition here, what is an internal node? Internal node is any node in this tree that you are seeing minus the nil leaves, the, the black boxes at the bottom, okay? So we don't, in this, in this tree here that I'm looking at, if I wanna count the number of internal nodes, it is the number of circles, okay? Exclude all the boxes, so we have three five red circles and we have five black circles that we have 10 internal nodes okay if you look at let's just verify this result if it makes sense what is the black height of the root for example here the black height the black height 
of the root, we said it is 2. So 2 to the 2 minus 1, it is 3. Right? 2 to the 2 minus 1 is 3. What's the number of internal nodes in the tree rooted, uh, rooted at the root? It is 10. And 10 is greater than or equal to 3. 10 is greater than or equal to 3. If you look at this, you know, it looks so trivial that 10 is much larger than 3. When, where do we get close to that bound, lower bound of 2 to the b of h, b h of x minus 1? Imagine that we don't have, we don't have any red nodes and our tree is as follows. And I'm not now going to draw the external leaves, the, bl the black boxes, but imagine that our tree is like this. If you look at the black height of the root here, it is the sorry, the black height of the root. It is three. Why it is three? Because we have this is one black node on the path, second black node on the path, and again the the black leaves that I'm not showing here. That's the third one. So two to the third minus one is seven. And if you look at the number of internal nodes in this tree, it is exactly seven, okay? So if you have, let's say, a fully uh, a full balanced tree, the tree is fully balanced, and all the nodes are black, you are gonna hit that lower bound, okay? So if we go back to the result here, and we wanna prove it, how do we prove this result? And prove, we prove it by induction, okay? Again, remember that trees are Trees are recursively defined structures anyway, so induction is, is a standard technique to prove results on them. So we prove the result by induction on what? By induction on the height of the node x. Okay? The height of a node x is the number of the length of the longest path from node x to a leaf under it. Okay? So the height of a leaf, these black boxes in the tree, are, is zero. The height of parents of the leaves is 1, the height of grandparents of a leaf is 2, and so on. Okay, so what's the base case? The base case is where we have h of x is 0. So what is the tree here in this case? The tree is this. Okay, so in the, ca in the case of a node whose height is 0, the tree just consists of a leaf. What is the black height of x in this case? We have the path from the leaf to a leaf is just that node. Because we don't include the node itself in the black height, then b of h is 0. Now, 2 to the 0 minus 1 is 0. Is the number of internal nodes in this tree that has only this leaf greater than or equal to 0? Yes. The number of internal nodes in such a tree, in this tree here that, ha that consists of only this leaf, is 0. Right? Because this leaf is not an internal node, and we have 0 greater than 0. Therefore, the base case, the, the, the lemma holds for the base case. Let's look at the inductive step. The inductive step here, we are going to look at, at a node x that, let's say, it has two children, left and right. And the left child is the root of subtree L. The right child is the root of subtree R. Okay? And let's look at B, BH of L and R in terms of BH of X. And there are two simple cases here. Think about it. If L is red, if L is red, then BH of L equals to BH of X. Okay. Look at let's look at at uh, the the tree here that we have, and let's look at the two top red node. The red nodes here have height b h two. Look at their their um, parent b h of the the parent is two. So if I look again, if I look at this these two red nodes here, their b h is two. Look at the parent, it's two as well, and it's very simple why this is true because. If the node is red, if the, if the color of L, if this is L here, if the color of L is, is red, then this 
the, the color of, of this node, this or this node is not contributing to BH of the parent because it is red, right? So BH of the parent must be coming, or the, the nodes that are contributing to BH of the parent X must be coming from children or descendants of L. So BH of L equal BH, BH of X. This is if L is red, if L is black, BH of L is BH of X minus one, okay? That is to say that, to say that from these two, I can conclude that BH of L is at least BH of X minus one, okay? It's either BH of X minus one or BH of X. So I can basically say BH of L is at least BH of X minus one. The, exactly the same reasoning applies to R and we have BH of R greater than or equal to BH of X minus one, okay? So we have these two, two results. Now, what is the inductive hypothesis? The inductive hypothesis tells us that the number of internal nodes in L, in the subtree L, it is greater than or equal to two to the BH of L minus one, which is greater than or equal to two to the BH of X minus one minus one, right? Where did I get this last inequality? From this. Okay. The same thing here, the, num the inductive hypothesis tells me that the number of internal nodes in R is also greater than or equal to 2 to the BH of X. Sorry, BH of, of R minus 1, which again is greater than to 2 to the BH of X minus 1 minus 1. Okay. Now, if we know these two facts about the, the L and subtrees L and R, we know something about the number of internal nodes in the entire tree rooted at X. It's one for the node X plus the number of internal nodes in L and R. So the number of internal nodes in the subtree rooted at X is greater than or equal to one for the node X itself plus we know that L, subtree L, is greater than or equal to two to the BH of X minus one minus one. And the number of internal nodes in R is greater than to two to the BH of X minus one minus one. And if, we, if you simplify this here, you will find that this is two to the BH of X minus one, okay? And this completes the proof here. We proved that the number of internal nodes in the subtree rooted at X is greater than or equal to two to the BH of X minus one, okay? So we are done with this lemma. So now we know that the number of internal nodes in a tree or a subtree rooted at X is greater than or equal to two to the BH of X minus one. We can use this lemma in a very simple way to prove a very powerful result about red black tree or the central result that we are really interested in. So the theorem is, the theorem that we want to prove here is that if we have T is a red black tree, is a red black tree and its height is H, and is H and has N internal nodes, okay? So I give you an, a red black tree that has N internal nodes and I tell you its height is H, whatever that H is. Then I can conclude that H is less than or equal to two times log of N plus one, okay? The proof, again, is by making simple use of the lemma we just proved. And the, very f the important fact to, make, to use in this proof is the following, that the black height of the root 
is greater than or equal to h over 2. You need to convince yourself of this, but it's very simple to convince yourself. Why is the number of black, uh, black uh, nodes on a path from the root to a leaf is greater than or equal to the height over 2? If you reason about it in the sense of contradiction, if this was false, it means that there are more than half of the nodes on a path will have to be red. But this will force us to have a, at least one node and its child being red, and that will violate property four of red black trees. Okay, so just draw a few trees and convince yourself of this of this fact that the black height of the root is greater than or equal to h over 2. Well, if this is the case, then the number of internal nodes from, from the lemma that we just proved, then the number of internal nodes in t is greater than or equal to 2 to the bh of root bh of root minus 1 but this is greater than or equal to 2 to the h over 2. Okay, let me actually write it again because my handwriting is not good there. So the number of internal nodes in T is greater by the lemma is greater than or equal to 2 to the bh of root minus 1. But we just stated that bh of root is greater than or equal to h over 2. Therefore, this quantity is greater than to 2 to the h over 2 minus 1. Okay? So if I, if I label this here, the number of internal nodes is n. So I just said that n is greater than or equal to 2 to the h over 2 minus 1. If this is the case, then just let's move the minus 1 to the left. Then we have n plus 1 greater than 2 to the h over 2. Let's take the log of both sides, so the log of n plus 1 greater than or equal to the to h over 2. And if this is the case, then we have 2 times log of n plus 1 greater than or equal to h, and we are done. So we just established that or proved that the height of a red black tree is at most 2 times log of n plus 1. 2 is a constant, 1 is a constant. Really what this is saying is the height of a red black tree is on the order or bounded by log of n times a constant. And this is really what we wanted to establish. And this is why we had all these properties on a red black tree so that we guarantee this. And this is what allows us to do all operations on a red black tree in O of log n. Now, if you think carefully about this, one question that should jump to your mind is the following. And this is where I will end this, this lecture here. You could have said, well, what's the point of using red colors? Here is a tree that, here is the tree that's, you know, all the nodes are black. And it satisfies the fifth property that every path from if you look at any node and look at all paths from that node to the leaves, all of them have the same number of black nodes. And if you look at this, really the height is on the order of log of n, where n in this case is 7. And this is true. If you actually look at property 5, in, in the sense that property 1 said we want the root to be black. Property 2 says every node is either red or black. And with the, we had the property... We had property uh, uh, th five, which is again, the, the important one is that every path from the root to a leaf must have equal number of black nodes. If we ignore the fourth property that if you have a node that's red, its children must be black, we can still guarantee that the height of this is O of log n. If you look at the proof of the lemma and the theorem I used before, I just proved here, I didn't make use of that property for at all. Now, of course, I used it for the color, but it was an if case, right? So if I, if you look at this proof here, at this proof, and I'm in this case here, 
I said, if L is red, then something. But if L is black, things work. And I could have L being black and all nodes are black and the, the theorem would have, would have held. Then the natural question you should ask yourself then, why are we bothering with red? Why are we not just using one color for this? The answer is, suppose now I add one more node to this tree. Suppose I add one more node to this tree and suppose it goes here. If you look at this now, I violated the fifth, the fifth property that all paths from, from a given node to the leaves have equal number of black nodes. If you look at the root, for example, it has, you know, one, one path has three black nodes, but one path has four. This is not good. If you reason about it carefully, you will see that to fix such a problem, to fix such a problem, we will have to do a lot of work because the effect of this could be global on the tree. In the next lecture, I will talk about insertion into a red-black tree. And you will see that once we insert a node into a red-black tree, I will immediately color it red and then proceed to fix any violation of properties. That fact that I colored it red is to make my life easy in terms of fixing any property that I violated. If I didn't want to color it red and I colored it only black, it will not violate any of the important properties of the tree, but fixing the tree will cause will be will be much more challenging. Okay? So while we could color the entire tree black and have that property that every path from a given node to all the leaves have the same uh, number of black nodes what what the problem with not with using with just one color would arise when we try to fix the tree whenever we are adding or removing node from it